Call the roll. Present. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, the liberty of the liberty and justice for all. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council dated Monday, May 15, 2006? So moved. Second. Discussion on the, on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion? Minutes are approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Reports and correspondence. And I would like to perhaps note the obvious, if anybody has missed the campaign signs that are out on the streets, that we do have um, an election tomorrow, and I encourage everyone to vote. And please remember that we have a citizen's uh, referendum I think that's what we call it, on the ballot, um, to actually um, amend the Cape Elizabeth Ordinance that is known as the Shortcut Petition. And I encourage everyone to educate themselves on that before the end of the day tomorrow and to be sure and cast a ballot, yay or nay, on that item. Um, reports and correspondence. Councilor Lynch. Uh, just a couple things. I uh, just wanted to note that the Comprehensive Plan Commission is holding a public forum this Thursday, June 15th at 7 p.m. Um, the Comprehensive Plan draft is about half done in draft, and so the chapters are on the town website, and we encourage people to um, get a look at those chapters and to come to our forum on Thursday night. Um, it's a plan that uh, I think those of us who've been on the council for a while know that we really do look to it um, in terms of land use planning and zoning and any number of things. So it's really important to get public input. And I would also just like to mention that yesterday was high school graduation. And um, speaking as a parent, I just want to thank the school board and school department and Jeff Shedd and police department and fire and everyone else who was involved. It was a lovely afternoon and the weather cooperated. So just note that. And uh, everyone should uh, be careful on the roads now because all those seniors are out of school and <laughs> have a little too much time on their hands, I'm afraid. <laughs> Other items? I would like to note one other thing, and that is that the Maine Municipal Association's nominating committee um, has honored one of our own, Councilor Swift Kayata, by, nomina by nominating her um, to be a candidate for the vice president's slot on the executive committee of the Maine Municipal Association. Um, the election will be in July. We as a council will have an opportunity to cast a ballot, one town, one vote. Mm -hmm. um, and the uh, sitting vice president moves up to become the MMA president the following year. So uh, with a little luck um, and with uh, towns casting ballots for the most qualified candidate, I'm sure that our councilor Swift Kayata will be the Maine Municipal Association Executive VP for 2007, or at least we hope. So good luck to you, and with that. Thank you. I hope so, too. But I understand that there are another couple of candidates throwing their hat into the ring. So we will, we will find out. But thank you. Well, you make I us hope all. I hope I can carry Cape Elizabeth's vote. 
you, you, you make us all proud, and I'm sure you'll carry Cape Elizabeth's vote, and if your potential opposition sizes up their opposition before they throw, throw their hat into the ring, perhaps they'll reconsider. Hope so. Any other items for reports and correspondence? Do we have a report from our acting town manager? We do. Thank and, you very much. And perhaps we should note why our town manager is absent tonight. He is away on rotary obligations, so he'll be back next week. Well, he is more than just away. <laughs> He's way away. Well, David, tell us. He is far, far away. <laughs> he is in Sweden um, for an international rotary uh, meeting. I want to take a moment to publicly thank all those involved in the Memorial Day Parade, uh, in particular Jim Cox, who for about the fifth year or so has chaired the parade for us. Um, another way that the Cox family has given to this community in, in volunteering for us, we appreciate that. Thank you to the fire department for, host, for hosting the open house, um, and thank you to the staffs of the school department, community services, police, and public works um, as well, and for all those folks who attended. I think the parade and certainly the laying of the wreath and, and so forth is, um, is a well tribute to the Memorial Day festivities. So we thank all those involved with that. I um, also want to remind folks that Family Fun Day is this coming Saturday, June 17th. It does begin with a parade, and if the weather cooperates, we'll end with fireworks um, Saturday evening. There is information on the website if folks want more information. Uh, there's a chairman, there's a, um, his name is Stephen Culver, and Frank Butterworth will be chairing the parade this year. So if anybody has any questions, those two gentlemen can certainly help them. And just one last thing I wanted to note is Mary Ann talked about the comprehensive uh, planning committee. At the same time a year ago, the council also um, adopted the ad hoc committee for the Spurwing Church Study Committee. We have also been meeting for a year. I'm one of two staff members that serve on that committee, and we will be reporting out to the council within the next few weeks. So that work is coming to um, completion as well and uh, getting ready for the council review. So we look forward to that process as well. Thank you. Chairman. Councilor Moles. Uh, you might want to mention that the parade actually steps off at 10.30 in the morning, and it goes from about the cookie jar right into Fort Williams Park. So for those that are listening, you want to make sure you get your spots early, because we think this year the weather's going to cooperate, and we have a lot of really <laughs> great groups coming out, including I'm in a drum and bagpipe band, we'll be performing, and we've got some little motor scooters that are going to come out and do tricks, and some mini NASCAR cars. So we've got a great parade scheduled for everyone this year, and uh, with a little luck, the fireworks too. Good. Thank you. It is now time for citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. So if there are any citizens here who would like to uh, speak to the council on any items that are not on this evening's agenda, uh, you are now welcome to do so. Anyone? Seeing none, we will move on with our agenda. The first item on our agenda is item number 1152006, the 911 calls answering point. And Chief Williams, would you like to address this item? Sure. Thank you. Good evening. Um, back along the legislature, um, took the PSAPs, and PSAPs is Public Safety Answering Point. That would be where your 911 calls come in. Um, they uh, chose to reduce those. Uh, right now, currently, we have 48 PSAPs. They're reducing them from 16 to, to 16 to 24, and I think they're going to come out with a number of possibly 26. But uh, on the chopping block would be Cape Elizabeth. Um, as of July 1 of this year, we have to have in place um, a letter to the PUC as to where we choose to have our 911 calls go. If we don't have a letter in place, then the PUC will choose where our 911 calls go. So we've been working on, a, as you well know, in, in years past on consolidation and looking at this 911 issue. Um, we would like uh, permission to enter into an agreement with C City of South Portland and have our 911 calls go there. 
Uh, we feel it's a great marriage. Uh, we have the fire chief here from South Portland, as we do the fire chief from Cape Elizabeth, if you should choose to ask them any questions. But we feel it's a good marriage. And also tonight, along with that uh, request, we'd also like to uh, have your approval to look at a, a working operational group, is what we're going to call it, uh, which would consist of the two police chiefs, the two fire chiefs, and two dispatchers from each community in order to look to possibly further communications to work towards a possible consolidation. Not that that's going to happen tomorrow, but uh, possibly look in to see how we might be able to move that forward. Okay. Could, could I ask a question? And when sure. you say consolidation, you mean consolidation of the whole dispatch function? Correct. That's what Just the working group would be looking at, right? Uh, that would be one form before you tonight. The other form, of course, is just the 911 calls. And that would be um, your approval for us to send that letter in uh, before July 1 um, for our calls to be answered by South Portland. Thank you. Well, did you have a question? Well, right. <clears throat> uh, the information says that we would be paying uh, at a cost of $1 per capita annually. Now, does that go to South Portland? That one dollar or what we placed in the budget already was ninety one hundred dollars to try to anticipate um, <clears throat> what this fee might be. Um, South Portland has an added cost of course when they answer our calls. Um, <clears throat> if you've heard of the word EMD, I mean the acronym EMD which would be emergency medical dispatch, they might be forced in order to um, take a call which would be an emergency medical call, that they, they are going to have to EMD or give the advice to the person on the other end of the phone without transferring that call immediately to us. Therefore, there comes a cost to them in order to train the personnel and to keep that training up to speed. So we felt um, the manager, the fire chief, myself felt that dollar per capita was uh, a, fair, uh, a fair way to go. And then I'm just wondering if there are any other costs that are that we would need to be spending here. I don't know as a result of the working group and the change in the dispatch. There, there would be no further cost on the 911 calls at this particular time. Um, <clears throat> should consolidation come about, should and that's down the road, there, there may be costs that that's why the, we have the group. Excuse me. That's why we have the group in order to look at those things. That uh, what are the costs going to be? How could we do it? Where would where would we put the dispatch? Would it be Cape Elizabeth? Would it be South Portland? And also on those particular uh, forums, you never know. Uh, we've had ongoing uh, conversations with other communities. We don't know when that they're going to join the mix on that particular front. Other questions for Chief Williams? I have a question. How many people do you anticipate participating in the working group? Like, uh, kind of I'm sorry? How many people will be on the working group? There will be uh, two, two police chiefs, one from each community, two fire chiefs, one from each community, and then two dispatchers from each community. So no members of the public? No. Not at this particular time. We feel that the dispatchers are going to be the uh, people that are going to really be the driving force here. They, they are the people that do the day in, day out, 24-7 work, um, and they'll be able to assist the chiefs, if you would, in, in helping put this together. Chief, I had a question about this proposed letter to the Maine Public Utilities Commission. It's a letter that's proposed to be signed by the towns of Scarborough, Old Orchard Beach, Cape Elizabeth, and the city of South Portland. But it seems to, I'm wondering why four towns are signing on to one letter, because it proposes two separate things. It proposes a merger of Cape Elizabeth with um, South Portland's 911, and Old Orchard Beach is proposing that they be merged into um, Scarborough um, for their answering point. But why would all four towns be submitting this in one letter? Because there's nothing that involves all four communities. At this particular time, you're correct. Um, 
A while back, most of our conversations has been, have been with the three communities, Scarborough, South Portland, and Cape Elizabeth. Um, what just happened recently here is Old Orchard, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn for them, um, would incur, incur um, very high cost to keep their dispatch. Therefore, they decided um, before their budget season that they might go outside, and their marriage, they felt, was with Scarborough. That threw a big, a big, you know, what do I want to say? Uh, Curveball, so to speak, into what we had already tried to uh, work together with Scarborough, Cape Elizabeth, and South Portland. We just did not feel at that particular time that uh, we could take on that entity of all four, um, whether it be the PSAP in South Portland or whether the PSAP was in Scarborough. But we still wanted to look forward and look together at consolidation. First, maybe trying a baby step with South Portland, maybe, and, and um, Old Orchard trying that with Scarborough, and then maybe go together. You never know down the road if that's going to work. We, we already have a memorandum of understanding that if we purchase any particular equipment, software, uh, that we will try to buy like um, software and like material. So if that merger does take place, we'll be able to network that very in, in a fluid motion. And um, that's why we went on together. We're hoping that the PUC looks down the road and says, you know, the, the, this group is working together. Let's not throw a stumbling block in their way and make them merge together, PSAP only, and, and make them merge together. And um, right now there's five PSAPs allotted in Cumberland County. And um, Scarborough is looking to take over one of those at this particular time. That's why we felt that going together might be the best way. So Maine PUC is expecting to receive something that involves Scarborough, Cape Elizabeth, and South Portland, and that's why it's all in one letter? Correct. And, and the Old Orchard, like I said, has been a newly, um, a newly partner here, and it did throw a little bit of a wrench into the works. And uh, just because we, we, that's an unknown for us right now. You, you may even have a language barrier with 911. And that's something that uh, we didn't know whether we could take on or not in that particular group. So we felt that if we did it this way, took baby steps, but showed the PUC that we were in good faith looking forward, then, then uh, you know, it may come about. Okay. Would anyone like to make a motion? I make a motion that we uh, support the 911 calls answering point uh, in South Portland for the two communities, as stated in item 115. And, and the can, can you add the second portion okay. of the request and, as and, well? And I also propose that we authorize the staff, a working group of the chiefs, the police chief, fire chief, and dispatch to work with the city of South Portland um, to review all options for full consolidations of the dispatch function. Motion, Councilor McKinney. Second. Second, Councilor Fritz. Discussion on the motion? Councilor Mullins. I would just like to say that I'm going to vote in favor of the motion, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm in favor of consolidating our dispatch or moving our dispatch from Cape Elizabeth. I think we receive a lot of benefits above and beyond the dispatch service from our dispatchers. As you know, they, they do quite a few other functions in the office, whether it's handing out burn permits or being there in person to answer residents' concerns at, at the uh, counter. So although I'm glad you're looking at this, I'm very glad that you're including the dispatchers in this. I'm not happy that the state has forced us to consolidate this, this PSAP and take it away from us. There's, as you know, many concerns about the possibility of dropped calls, et cetera. But uh, I will be voting in, in favor of this. Uh, but please come back to us with you know, the, the real costs of what it's going to take uh, to either keep or consolidate our dispatch, because it may be a cost worth paying <clears throat> for the level of service we get from our in-town dispatchers. 
That's correct, and that's why we have that. That's why we want that group, because I think we will be able to come back with costs. Other discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Motion is approved. Seven in favor. None opposed. <coughs> Next item on our agenda. Thank you, Chief Williams. Thank you. Is item number one one six dash two zero zero six. Good table annual licenses. Do we have anyone here happy from the good table? There. I'll move that we approve the annual liquor license application for the good table restaurant. A second motion. Uh, discussion on the motion? Council Mulls. I'd just like to say how glad I am that after the fire they had a couple years ago, they were able to rebuild and they're a great addition to our community. And is there anyone here who would like to comment one way or another on the renewal of the Good Table annual licenses? Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Next item, 117-2006 Nordic Ski Proposal. This is a matter that is um, back on our agenda after our meeting on May 15 and after a workshop on June 6. Do we have a motion? Could I? Yeah, thank you. Um, I had um, emailed to all of you this afternoon a motion, and I will read it out loud. Um, I've been asked to make a couple of additional uh, changes to that. So. Um, the first motion would be um, that the council approve the Cape Nordic proceed proceeding with phase one of the Cape Nordic Trail at Gull Crest subject to the following conditions. One, completion of the preliminary engineering assessment to include among other relevant engineering information deemed appropriate by OST and the town manager, identification of wetlands, if any, identification of the need for storm water and erosion control and recommended methods for addressing the same and I would ask that you add to that Cape Nordic shall be responsible to pay for this assessment number two receipt of any necessary Maine Department of Environmental Protection and town permits as may be required by law number three evidence of sufficient funds to complete phase one work and number four, completion of the work in accordance with the OST assessment. Second. Now, David, may I speak to the motion? You may. David, you mentioned that this had come before us. So I just wanted to put a little history in place. It first came before us, I say us as a collective body in July 2002, before July 2002, um, actually, we were um, looking at the Goldcrest Trails master plan. And while that was still in draft form, a number of um, people associated with Cape Nordic came to us and asked us to include in the master plan um, accommodation for competitive uh, Nordic skiing. And so at that time, um, language was added that said, some or all of the trails may be widened to 10 to 12 feet to accommodate competitive cross-country skiing. The trails that will be widened for cross-country use will be designated at a future date with the approval of the town council. Cape Nordic, of course, came back in December and made a presentation to us. And they have um, met on a couple of occasions with the Conservation Commission. I think a lot of people have worked um, very hard through the spring. Um, as a result of that, the Conservation Commission voted 6-1 in favor of the proposal, or at least in favor of phase one. Um, the proposal is very consistent um, with the master plan, which was adopted in 2002, and which did clearly contemplate competitive cross-country use. Um, the key concern of the snowmobile community, which had been raised with us earlier, was the issue of exclusive use. The Nordic group has assured us in writing that they will only ask for up to four to five days of exclusive use per winter. At all other times, the trail will be open to all other users. 
And um, just to be clear, um, that's walkers, snowshoers, recreational Nordic skiers, as well as snowmobilers will all be able to benefit from um, the construction of this trail. Another issue that um, has been looked at by the Conservation Commission is the environmental impact. And the Conservation Commission addressed that in their um, report that they sent to us. Um, and it, particularly with respect to phase one, um, I can find that report. They were pretty clear that um, there would be no significant environmental impact. In fact, um, they said uh, phase one is covered by degraded secondary growth, shrubby hardwood. It is not an area of exceptional biological or visual value. The problem stemming from erosion can be addressed by requiring Cape Nordic to carefully and professionally ensure that the trail is built with proper erosion control, and hence the request that we, um, that we made at our workshop last week that they retain OST. Um, I, another concern that's been raised is funding um, the concern that um, the money be in hand. So the motion that I have before you says that they um, cannot commence, although we're authorizing phase one, they couldn't commence the work until they show evidence of sufficient funds to complete the phase one work. Um, the last issue I wanted to address was the Conservation Commission on page five and six of their report had 11 bullets of conditions or criteria that they thought should um, be incorporated into the work on the trails. Cape Nordic at the workshop agreed to 10 of those 11 conditions. So I think there's very little left that um, we need to discuss to hold them up on it. The one condition that they did not agree to at our workshop was the recommendation, and I'll read from the conservation report, we recommend that stone dust, um, based on comments of Town of Cumberland Recreation Director Bill Landis, who supervises maintenance of the Twin Brooks trails. He stated if he had to do it over again, one big change he would make is to use stone dust rather than wood chips. Well, I called Bill Landis, and Bill Landis said to me that, indeed, he did say that if he could do it over again, he would use stone dust, except that he said he also said that if money were no object, he would use stone dust. But he said realistically, uh, money's always an issue. And um, he found that, um, if I can quote him, he said that um, they have used wood chips, and the wood chips have been absolutely adequate at um, Twinbrook. Um, he said the only trail that he knows of in Maine that uses stone dust is the Pineland Trail, which was funded by the Weaver <coughs> Foundation and the noise money, and, and money was no object with that. He indicated that they also have a free supply of wood chips. There is some um, refilling. You need to bring more wood chips in. But um, he thought that their tra trails with wood chips were absolutely um, adequate. And he also, and I did not ask him about this, but he also um, praised the work of John Norton, the trail designer that designed the Twinbrook trails and is also the designer um, that had been retained by um, Cape Nordic. So um, personally, I left the workshop and was concerned that they had met or agreed to all of the conditions and it just didn't make sense to me that the motion that was circulated last week didn't just say you can do phase one. Now, I also have a motion for phase two, but that's a separate motion, and I just wanted to at least lay out why we should move forward with phase one and authorize that. Councilor Fritz. Um, I very much appreciate Councilor Lynch's um, motion because I think it includes most of um, <coughs> the concerns I have. And, and actually, um, you've mentioned a couple things from the um, Conservation Commission's recommendations. And I guess I would feel more comfortable if there were some wording in there from those. And so I've put together some wording that I'd like to make as a, an amendment to the motion. Um, 
that methods of trail clearing uh, would be used as outlined in the Conservation Commission's recommendations of June 5th, 2006. And those I'm referring to, the ones that were agreed to um, by Cape Nordic. Um, and I'm not, uh, my intention is not to include the stone dust is this, issue in is that. Is that the language on the bullets on page five? Right. Um, the stumps removed, the brush and trees cleared. Right. And which that, they and, did agree at the workshop. Yes. Was and so I'm calling that methods of trail clearing that, okay. that they have outlined. And um, the other one I'd like to add as an amendment is the understanding that the trail will not exclude other users more than four or five days per winter, which I think they agreed to as well. I would accept that as a friendly amendment. If we could just say methods of trail clearing as outlined on pages five and six of the, of the Conservation Commission report, just so that we're right. absolutely clear as to what we're adding here. And that's June 5th, okay. 2006. Mm -hmm. but, but not to include the stone dust. Bullet. That's right. Because that, I don't think of that as trail clearing mm -hmm. methods. That's more engineering. <clears throat> Councilor. Uh, I, I think the, um, the motion suggested by Councilor Lynch is fine with the following comments. You inserted after your first um, statement a provision that Cape Nordic would be responsible for paying to pay OS. for the, I, I would add that just to be clear that they would also be responsible for paying for any MDEP and town permits. Yes. Okay, so maybe you want to insert that after. That. That. And then the last thing is um, number three, where it says evidence of sufficient funds to complete phase one work. It seems to me we should have some discussion at least as to who, when, and what type of, you know, who decides whether the evidence is sufficient and um, how that approval, or is it the town manager? Or I'm satisfied leaving that with the town manager. And I, I think, I think ultimately, we don't need to micromanage these things. I agree. So, isn't that usually a condition of the permit? They have to satisfy that as part of that process. I mean, well, but we're we're this is conditional improvement by the town council. <coughs> So I'm not talking about permitting at this point. I'm talking about approval of the So council. evidence of sufficient funds to complete phase one work presented to the town manager for to his approval, his determination. Manager. Yes. Okay. That's fine with me. And I would accept that as a friendly amendment. <laughs> Councilor Swift, yeah. Can we have like another friendly. <laughs> no, it depends on how friendly it is. It's pretty friendly. So far, it's everything we yeah. discussed at the yeah. workshop. It's, it's friendly. <laughs> on that third one, evidence of sufficient funds to uh, complete phase one work. It, since what we've been talking about in one and two is just the engineering assessment and the permits, maybe phase one, just for the sake of down the road, that it's to complete phase one work. You had said including the permits, but for the for the whole phase one project, you know what I mean? I mean, it seems self-evident, oh, but that's the intent. I know that's the intent, but just all construction to include construction permits, whatever, whatever, everything for phase one. It says the to evidence of sufficient funds to complete phase one work. So I just I wanted to make sure it complete, wasn't the phase yes. one meaning. Whole project, it's, yeah. Phase one, yeah. That that's fine if we add the whole project phase one or something like that. I just don't want it to be confusing with one and two, which talks about approving them getting the engineering study, so that you know it may be self-evident, but it would just it make me feel better. So would you accept that as a well? Amendment? Did you need additional language? Yes, that to wasn't evidence of sufficient funds to complete phase work. Um, 
or to phase one, we could say phase one project. That would make me feel better. That's that. I think that's fine. Thank you. Appreciate it. I will accept that as a friendly amendment. Thank you. I will likewise accept that as a very friendly amendment. <laughs> we have a very friendly motion on the table. <laughs> Further discussion on the motion, and please don't ask anybody to re for me to repeat what the motion is as it now stands. <laughs> I, I, I can do it, but I think, I think I it, do it would be messy. <laughs> Any other discussion on the motion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion as presented and amended and amended and amended <laughs> and amended. <laughs> the motion as amended is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. <coughs> Now, I'd like to make a, an additional motion on this item number. And that is that upon the completion of the preliminary engineering assessment for phase one, that the town manager request that the town engineer Oast Associates prepare a preliminary engineering assessment of the portion of the proposed competitive Nordic Ski Trail in Gullcrest recommended by the Cape Nordic Ski Group and referred to as phase two with the preliminary engineering assessment to include among, among any other relevant information deemed appropriate by Oast Associates, identification of wetlands, if any, identification of needs for stormwater and erosion control and recommended methods for addressing needed stormwater and erosion control, including placement of culverts, use of filter fabric, seeding with grasses, and recommended base layers. And before Oast Associates prepares the preliminary engineering assessment of the phase two trail, Oast Associates shall submit a bid price to the town manager, and the town manager shall present the bid price to the Cape Nordic Ski Group, which group shall advance the necessary funds to the town before the town manager authorizes Oast Associates to proceed with the work on phase two. This was the original motion that was for phase one. It is, but I'm now transferring that from phase one to phase two so that phase two can be, at least the preliminary engineering work can be commenced without it coming to us after OST gets its work done on phase one. I will second your motion. Discussion on the motion. Councilor Vanich. I had, had brought with me a motion similar to the first on phase two. For similar reasons, I think it's something that um, we have looked at and the Conservation Commission has looked at, I realize there are more significant environmental questions associated with phase two, uh, but I think that those can be addressed by MDEP. So I, I still would like to make a plea for um, approving phase two outright, but if phase two is not going to be approved outright tonight, I think this at least allows um, the group to go forward with more work on phase two. Um, I personally think that getting phase two in place will be an improvement. Well, the trails that are back there now are wonderful for snowmobiling, and that's a great thing, but they are not good for walking in the springtime. They are underwater, and admittedly, this has been a wet spring, but they are underwater. And so I think that the trails that are being proposed for phase two will be of benefit to walkers, um, dog walkers, any number of people who are not back there on snowmobiles in the winter. So ultimately, um, and personally, I favor phase two. I think it will be a great thing for Gullcrest. Um, and I don't see I don't see doing what you're proposing, David, as a setback. I do see it as a step forward, and I'm 
just perhaps a, a little more ahead of wanting to move this along. But I do see what we're what you're proposing as a step forward on phase two. And, and the reason I'm proposing phase two differently than phase one in that manner is that we are anticipating that there will be significantly more engineering issues with phase two than phase one. And whether that in fact plays out to be the case, we don't know. But anticipating that, that's why we're asking, at least by this motion, that the engineering assessment be prepared, be delivered to the town, we'll have an opportunity to look at it before we decide where it goes from there. Other discussion on the motion? You need a second on your motion? I did. Okay. Um, all those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Nordic Ski Group, that completes that agenda item. The next item on our agenda is item 118-2006, kids turf proposal. Before we make a, any kind of a motion on this, there was notice sent out by the town to a fairly good sized distribution area of people who are in physical proximity to the proposed field. Is there anyone here tonight who came to address the council on any matter related to the field? We did receive a couple of emails today. Okay, seen no one here who is here to address the council based on the notice that was sent out. Would anyone like to make a motion? Councilor Dill. I would move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approve the request of the citizens group Kids Turf to begin fundraising for the proposed placement of an artificial turf surface and related facilities on the athletic field located behind Cape Elizabeth High School. I would further move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approve the placement of a temporary fundraising sign in accordance with the applicable town ordinance. And finally, I would uh, move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approve the creation of an ad hoc committee known as the Turf Field Committee as it is described in the um, proposed draft motion appended to our agenda. Uh, prepared by Deborah Lane, the assistant town manager, dated June 9, 2006. Second. Could I make a friendly amendment to that? That, the, that it be as shown in the memo dated June 9, prepared by the assistant town manager, but as revised under a date of June 10, 2006. As revised June 10th? Uh, I haven't seen the revision, but <laughs> what is, yeah, if you can what, tell me what, what the revision, revision says, then I most likely um, will accept your sure. invitation. The, <laughs> that's a fair request. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, proposed revision um, changes the uh, composition of the committee from 10 people to 9 people. The original uh, composition proposed that there be two town councilors, two school board members, and three citizens appointed by the chair of each of the town council and of the school board. The revision, so total of 10, six citizens, four elected officials. The revision changes that to the same four elected officials, two town councilors, two school board members, but five citizens appointed jointly by the chairs of the town council and the school board. So, Nine member committee, five citizens appointed jointly by the two chairs instead of each of the chairs separately appointing three citizens. I will accept that friendly amendment. Likewise. And the other change was with regard to filling any, any vacancy 
that might be cre um, created once the committee is formed. Any vacancies would be filled um, if it is a vacancy created by a departing town councilor. The vacancy would be filled by the then chair of the town council. Any vacancy created by a departing school board member would be filled by the then chair of the school board. And any vacancy created by a departing citizen would be filled by the joint appointment of the then chairs of the town council and the school board. I would accept that amendment. Likewise. Those are the changes. Councilor swift -Gayada. Could we, perhaps I missed something in my packet. I hadn't seen that before and we'll, I presume we'll be able to get a copy of that revised charge. Sent out by email last Friday. Well, but the revised wasn't. Well, no, the, uh, the revised was sent out over the weekend. I have weekend, the one, the 10 yeah. person yeah. one. We I have the June 9th, so. not the June 10th. Right. This is still June 9th, so this isn't going to so. Oh, no, no. It gets revised. So okay. Yes, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead. I would like to add to the, uh, under the committee purpose and charge, uh, the last bullet on page two, um, that they would develop a plan for operation maintenance and use of turf field through the school. I'm, I feel like the issue of maintenance is um, not included in, in these bullets. <clears throat> That's fine with me. So the last bullet will read, develop a plan for operation, comma, maintenance, and use of the turf field, et cetera. And I would likewise accept that friendly amendment. Thank you. Everybody's being so friendly tonight. <laughs> Councilor swift Kayata. Okay, well, here's one. Um, <laughs> so well, I'm, I feel friendly, but I'm not sure how everybody else will take it. I'm in, first of all, I want to say I'm, I'm generally in support of this. I mean, there are a few little things here and there, but I generally think it's a, a good idea um, and we'll support it. Um, I, I do have a question. Um, about the financing. I, I seem to be a numbers person. I feel constrained by the numbers sometimes. And um, I am, I would, I'm just reading through, this just occurred to me. Um, in the committee purpose and charge, I think it, we have under all those various bullets, it says a plan for how the funds are to be held and how expenses will be paid um, and then Farther down, we have a bullet that says, develop a plan for raising and securing the funds for replacement of the turf field. Um, I think we need to just add something about develop a, a plan for determining the amount needed. It's not just how to raise it, but determining the amount needed. Um, I think you see before you, I, I passed him out, Kevin Sweeney, who's on the school board, was kind enough to um, address some questions I had, because, and he was the one who addressed them because he was the, the guy who figured out all the cash flows last time at our workshop. And you see before you the financing, um, the replacement cost only through endowment. And this is, I want to thank Kevin for providing this information. Um, my concern is just that uh, what we saw at the workshop last week um, showed that with a $50,000 initial endowment for the replacement field 12 to 15 years from now, that the school and town budgets would have to chip in anywhere from five to $7,000 each to, um, through the power of compound interest, get the right amount of money, the $300,000 plus that we would need a dozen years from now to replace the field, and thus, the field would sort of be paid for by itself. My concern is that I'm not sure where that five to seven thousand um, dollars, at least on the municipal side, would come from, um, because in a conversation I had with our um, director of public works, Bob Malley, today, he indicated to me that he felt, as best as could be determined, and this is an inexact science, but he felt that the maintenance increased maintenance costs of having 
and artificial turf field were balanced out pretty much by the decreased maintenance costs that you'd have from not having a grass field. So basically, if we were hoping, as I was last week, that maintenance cost savings on an annual basis were going to be a way for the town, the municipal budget, to sort of fund throwing money into this pot to build it up to be enough money a dozen years from now to replace the field. I don't, I don't think that's a good hope. I don't think we should be counting on that. So what the council needs to think about is either we need to find someplace else in the budget to gain that five to seven thousand dollars a year for the next dozen years and that would probably mean taking it from some other budget line or it would mean increasing taxes by five to seven thousand dollars a year to fund that putting the, the deposits of money in to get the new field um, the adding on to the expenses is never popular <laughs> as an option with t the taxpayers and so I, I would I want to support this but I, I would hope that at the very end on page three in the last paragraph it says um, unless otherwise expressly authorized by the school board and the town council no work shall be commenced on the installation or construction of the turf field until all funds needed for the installation and construction have been raised by kids turf and so on and so forth. I would like to change that. It says until all funds needed for the installation, comma, construction, and re the replacement endowment. And by that I don't mean they have, that we have to come up with $300,000, but we have to have a plan for how this is going to be funded. And it may mean that the initial chunk of money that we start the endowment with has to be bigger, has to be fundraised. It's sort of a moving target right now. So I would see that as part of the charge of this committee to figure out we've got an estimate of six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Six hundred for the field, fifty for the initial chunk to get the endowment fund going. I think we may need more than fifty in there for the endowment chunk um, because Kevin's numbers indicate that um, if we put in $50,000 and didn't add to it, so it's a little bit different scenario, it would take 37 years to get up to the goal. Um, if we just wanted to put an initial chunk on it and not add anything to it, either the school budget or the municipal budget, um, it would take and a hun it would take $150,000 to start to compound itself so that in 15 years we'd come up with the right amount of money. So this is very long-winded, but I just want to be clear about it is not opposition to the project that drives my wanting to add this language. It's just wanting to be clear about what the financial plan is. And I, I think by, by adding that phrase to the end and by adding to the bullets on page two, a bullet that says develop a plan for determining the needed amount and then for raising and securing the funds for replacement of the turf field. I think we can go forth if we add those to the, to the, um, to the charge. So I don't know how I would summarize that for, as a friendly amendment, but can that's, I do it for you? that's my friendly amendment. Can I try and? Sure. Summarize it or be specific about what we're going to do to it. Yep. Um, I'd like to suggest that the last paragraph not be changed at all. Okay. And the reason for that is that the very last two lines say that nothing is going to happen until both the school board and the town council have, have approved the recommendations and plans submitted by the turf field committee. So I think that if we go up to the bullet points and in change the plans to be submitted to include the references to determining the amounts that will be part of the plans that have to be approved by the town council before they begin part of the plan will be how much do we need and where is it going to come from so if we go back up to the specific bullet points mm -hmm. um, the second bullet point i think could be easily changed to say develop a plan for determining the amount of funds needed to construct the turf field, comma, 
how the funds are to be held and how expenses will be paid, et cetera. So that addresses the concern about developing a plan for how much do we need to get started with the project. Yeah. But it doesn't address your issue about determining the amount needed for replacement. But if we go down to the fifth bullet point, yeah. perhaps yeah. that could be changed by saying develop a plan for determining the amount, comma, the amount needed. Um, determining the amount needed, comma, raising and securing the funds for replacement. Well, let's see, that's a little awkward. I think it's already covered. Yeah, I think I mean, it's I implicit think in the language that's already there, but you could you simply say, a develop a plan for raising and securing the um, necessary or requisite funds for replacement of the turf field. And it seems to me it is How about implicit. develop a plan for raising and securing sufficient funds for replacement of the turf field? So you're just adding sufficient. Sufficient instead of the. Right. Develop instead a plan for raising and securing sufficient funds. Yes. I mean, I Superintendent Hawkins, would you mind coming up to the podium? This has been a joint effort, and um, I don't want to see us tweak the committee charge in a way that you think would uh, be opposed in any way by the school board. I don't see it as being opposed by the school board. I'm looking at two school board members who are sitting there. I think our biggest concern is, number one, to get the turf field but also to guarantee we have a way, a method, that will raise the money in order to replace it. So I think, again, this would go back to the committee to take a look at and see how that can happen. Uh, I certainly would not look to Michael Ott to be raising $175,000, but certainly would be looking at a way where we could, we could manage this together. So I don't think you're taking away from our initial plan. I think our biggest concern is, is that piece, and be sure it's there. And I know, Ann, you had asked that question to me earlier today. And so I, I think we're on the right track. And I'm looking at both board members who seem to be shaking their heads yes as well. So I would, uh, I would suggest we go ahead as you're talking about. Okay, this isn't changing the substance, but it is adding a bit of flesh and Certainly. clarity to a couple of the points Certainly. in the charge. Yep. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. That, Other? That would make me happy and feel very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't want anything but that. Other comments or discussion? Councillor Fritz? I would like to comment that um, I am concerned about, you know, where the funds will be coming from. I mean, I, I am going to support the field, um, but I think that I'm hoping that the committee will look at um, raising the money and fees at the field, athletic fees or uh, when, when visitors come and they're, you know, ad admission um, to the field as the source of money, along with raising the money, um, plus the endowment that, that um, increases over time. Uh, because I really don't think that either our school budget or town budget are likely to find money, because as, as Councillor uh, Swift Kayata mentioned, we have to cut something out, particularly if something like um, Tabor passes and we're, we're limited, you know. Would this become part of our budget so we have to eliminate road work, we have to eliminate teachers, you know. I, I think it really needs to have the, the source of the funding come from fees and raising money. And, and so I hope that's what they come back with to us. <clears throat> Councilor Dill. Well, I would just like to state for the record that I accept Councillor Swift Kayata's um, friendly amendment, but um, at the same time, even though you haven't um, characterized your most recent comment as a friendly amendment, um, I am not suggesting by making this motion that I am necessarily a proponent or a supporter of fees to support the budgeting and the um, funding of the turf. And there's nothing about this motion that speaks to 
fees. Right. Anywhere, anytime. Just wanted to make that clear. That is something to be determined at a later date. Council Knowles. For the purposes of flash and clarity, I will also likewise accept that friendly amendment. Thank you. I know. All those in favor of the motion, as amended. The motion is approved, seven in favor, none opposed. Are there any councilors who would like to serve on this turf field committee? Council Knowles? Could do this at a workshop. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps someone. We will determine the additional counselor, but I may, but I need to consider yourself appointed. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. That completes the kids' turf proposal. Thank you all. Item number 1192006, Fort Williams Park Pay Display Working Group Report. Councillor Lynch, would you like to yes, talk about this? Yes, in fact, everyone is leaving too quickly. You may have a source. A um, couple of councillors talked about there are only two things we can do. We can cut things or we can raise taxes. And I've said for a long time we can cut things, we can raise taxes, or we can find new sources of revenue. And so I'm uh, happy to present the Fort Williams Park Pay Display Working Group Report. Um, as, as the council knows, and maybe some of the public remembers, um, a working group was appointed just, I think, a month ago. Is that right, David? Yes. And we met um, weekly. Um, three times in the month of May. We worked uh, three hours a night and have come up with a report um, for the council on how to implement a pay display system. If, if I may, I'd like to just um, read from short portions of it for the benefit of the public. Um, we were asked by the council to develop a specific proposal to implement a pay display parking system within the park. A pay display system consists of one or more centrally located solar powered parking meters. After parking your car, you walk to the meter and you insert your payment. Meters accept cash, credit, and debit cards. The machine will print out a dated receipt which you then put on the inside of your vehicle's window. Some machines will print out a two-part receipt. The other half of the receipt could be used for discounts at the gift shop or even a museum admission. Some have suggested it could be used for paid advertising, such as you find on your Hannaford um, receipt. Um, the main, um, the key points, I guess, there are, I think, 13 recommendations, and I'll be asking the acting town manager to make sure that this goes up on the town website, but the key recommendations are that Cape Elizabeth residents already fund the park through their tax dollars and they should not be required to pay for parking. Um, the group recommended that a valid transfer station sticker will serve as a Fort Williams parking decal. Um, second, the group recommended that non-residents should be charged $5 a day to park or may purchase a season pass through the same pay display meter for $25 a year. Um, the group recommended that buses and trolleys should be charged a parking fee, um, namely $20 a day um, or $100 a season. Uh, the group further recommended an implementation date of April 1, 2007. Um, the working group was very concerned about trying to implement this in the August-September time period. We thought it was more, far more important to um, work hard on the specifications. There are a number of vendors for these pay display systems, and we thought it was, would be important to give the manager and Bob Malley time to work on a good spec and then implement it in April when it's still relatively quiet. Um, 
Another uh, thing that the committee felt strongly about was that no school buses should be charged during the school year. Um, we thought it was very important to permit our neighboring school children. Um, many towns in Maine send their kids, uh, just as our kids go to Crescent Beach or Old Orchard Beach for a beach day, many other towns send their kids to Fort Williams. And the committee felt strongly that um, during the school year, school buses should be um, not charged. And lastly, and as important as anything, the committee um, was, I think, uh, pretty unanimous in recommending that the parking revenues that would be raised from a paid display system would be allocated to a Fort Williams Enterprise Fund, and that the intent is to fund the operation, maintenance, and capital costs of the park. There are other recommendations, um, but at this point, we're just asking you tonight to um, acknowledge receipt of the report, and um, we would recommend that you schedule it for a public hearing. And I just want to emphasize again, uh, first I want to thank all of the members of the committee who worked very, very hard on this, um, particularly the public members. And I also would like to thank um, Bob Malley and um, Neil Williams and Mike McGovern. But um, if I can um, name the public members, Mimi Taylor and uh, Bill Nickerson were the two public members. And we had Chuck Wilson, Ellen Netto, and Tina Harnden from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission also working with us. So it was a great group who went right to work and um, I think came up with a a good proposal. It, it may not be accepted in whole or in part, but you certainly have something that as a council you can vote on that's very specific. Thank you. I'd be happy like to, to answer any questions. I would like to move acknowledgement and acceptance of the report. Second. Receipt. 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 Uh, receipt of the report. And how about setting it for a public hearing on August 14th? Uh, <laughs> separate issue. Okay. We will take them separately. A motion to acknowledge receipt of the report. We haven't had a second yet. Second, Councillor Fritz. No? I seconded it. A second by Councillor Dill to acknowledge receipt. Any discussion on the motion to acknowledge receipt? Councillor Fritz. I just had a question. Um, the, the report doesn't contain any expected revenue or costs associated with um, setting it all up and just wondering if you had looked at any. Um, we did and thank you. Um, that I guess is an uh, omission. We anticipate, it, it depends on the vendors that you choose. The machines can cost anywhere from six to ten thousand dollars or more. So um, we thought a ballpark figure is probably around fifty thousand to implement. Could be more, could be less. Again, it, it, it depends on what the council decides. And I would also suggest that we workshop this as well as have a public hearing. Um, your other question was on expected revenues. That was much more difficult, Carol. Um, there have been no counts of cars, buses, whatever, since the 80s. Um, so it was sort of garbage in, garbage out. You can say if X number of cars come in and we charge Y, this is what it will yield. Um, I think everyone felt very comfortable that setting the fees at this level would clearly cover the cost of implementation. Um, and the other cost, it, it would be associated with enforcement and hiring an additional park ranger um, for the summer. So the so. 50,000 is just for it's meters. It's a ballpark to, to install the meters. As I said, it could be less, could be a little more. It's an initial, but it's an initial cost. And again, we'll have more of that information for you at the workshop, assuming you schedule a workshop. And we have a workshop date scheduled for June 22. Two weeks, 10 days from now. Um, and it's sort of open with 
a number of miscellaneous items to be considered, and this would be a nice item for us to consider I at our June 22 workshop. I think we could support workshop. that. Can we support that, Bob? I, I did already suggest to the working group that they pencil in that date, so I, I okay, think good. it's something we could support. Um, other discussion on the motion to acknowledge receipt of the report. All those in favor of the motion to acknowledge receipt. Motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Now, could I have a motion? I would to like to make a motion to set a public hearing at our August town council meeting, which is August 14th, 2006, uh, to further discuss the park pay display proposal. Motion, Councilor Moles. A second. Second, Councilor Lynch. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion to set a public hearing is approved. Six in favor, Councilor Fritz. Opposed? And can I and also add, I made a, a big, another omission. Um, Michael Moles and Ann Swift Kayata also served on that committee as well. And I should have mentioned their name when I was I was so nervous I would forget one of the members of the public that I forgot my fellow counselors, so my apologies. Thank you for that. Um, and everybody is okay with a workshop for June 22? Do we need that by formal motion? Or no? We just. We need I was going to make that motion. Okay. Oh, a workshop, we don't need a motion. I, I move that we set this to workshop, this topic to workshop on June 22nd. I second. Second, Councillor McKinney. All those in favor? Opposed? Six in favor, Councillor Fritz. Opposed? <laughs> and Marianne, thank you to you, Councillor Moles, Councillor Swift Kayata, and all the members of the public, and Bob Malley, who's here, and Chief Williams, our town manager. This was really a fast track item. Um, it was just a month ago that we asked that the committee be created and that they report back for tonight's meeting. And this was sort of record pace for getting a committee up and running, um, educated, and a report developed. So thank you to all of you for this. Councilor Mullins? I just wanted to comment that the reason I wanted to take the two issues separate was in case we had more discussion on where and when to set to, to public hearing. Uh, and I encourage the public to write us, email us, and show up for the public hearing because that's what's going to make the decision on whether we move forward with fees or not with fees, which means moving forward with a pay display system or not. There are a lot of pros and cons to both sides, and I've been getting a lot of feedback already, especially from non-Cape Elizabeth residents that are very upset about the proposal. So. Uh, it's always good to get public input, and that's what we depend on. So I encourage the public to come down on August 14th and before to give us their input so we can make a, a well-thought-out decision. Thank you. If I may just emphasize, too, um, we're not talking about an entrance fee, as is charged in a lot of state parks. It is a parking fee only, So, as proposed by the working group. Um, and perhaps I should have clarified, pedestrians and cyclists would not be charged, nor would anyone. I know frequently on Sunday afternoons, people like to drive through the park and circle the, white, the lighthouse and not get out of their car. Those people would not be charged. So the view is still free, if you will. And um, the, the whole point of it, though, is to, to raise enough money to make the park um, more, not only self-sustaining, but to provide more revenue than I think as a, a town we've been providing through our tax dollars. So. I think it's important people understand what that revenue would be used for. Marianne, do you want to elaborate? Because you guys talked at well, at length. we did talk about it at length, and it would be used for the operation maintenance of the park. And um, if there was money beyond the operation and maintenance, it would be used primarily for the capital costs, and we have a, um, an extensive capital improvement plan um, associated with the park that um, we haven't begun to um, 
to finish, um, for instance, the Goddard Mansion uh, is about a half million dollars in net present dollars in order to just repair that to maintain it as a ruin. Um, we're spending, what, 130000 a year on operation and maintenance and not a whole lot on those big repairs. So this is a real opportunity, in my view, to bring the park up to where it should be in terms of uh, necessary repairs and maintenance. Council Maltz. And as the public has an opportunity to look at the report, uh, they may see that we struggled quite a bit with setting up the correct fee structure, whether it be hourly or daily, and where we ended up was a daily parking fee, but you can also purchase a season pass all for very reasonable rates. And what we were really getting at was more than being a parking fee, we want people to think of it more as a donation to the park. It's a donation to help maintain this beautiful park that we have here in Cape Elizabeth. Okay, thank you all. Next item on our agenda is item number 120-2006, year end revised appropriations with our town manager, assistant town manager, like to fill us in on this? Um, the town manager <laughs> on <laughs> review of the budget in preparation for year end, which is June 30th, has um, seen that three accounts would possibly uh, be in deficit as of June 30. Uh, so it is recommended that these three accounts um, the needed amounts that these three accounts be adjusted uh, for June 30th ending. It would be insurance for $966, library building, $1,000 due to heating costs, and a police station, $2,000 due to heating costs. Um, the manager does note that he believes that there will be a healthy surplus and that the other, um, particularly heating costs, will be uh, within the budget. So with that, we would recommend approval of those three. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Councilor Lynch, second Councilor Fritz. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. It is now once again time for citizens' discussion of items not on <coughs> our agenda. And seeing no citizens who might like to speak. Um, I move we adjourn. Before we adjourn, I would just like to note um, that we do have a workshop that we have already scheduled for June 22nd. Um, the first formal item that we have put on our workshop agenda is the pay display uh, that we just approved this evening to send to workshop. Um, there will be a few other miscellaneous items that will be on the workshop. Um, I think the town manager has a, has a few things that he'd just like to bring us up to date on, perhaps the sewer project. Um, a quick look at where we stand on council goals and maybe just a few other miscellaneous items, but it sounds like the primary workshop agenda item will be the pay display. And the Thomas Jordan Trust will meet as the council, I mean the council meeting as the Thomas Jordan Trustees. And the Thomas Jordan <laughs> Fund Trustees will meet at that time to consider a proposed policy on asset management for the Thomas Jordan Trust Funds. So with that, Councilor Knowles? I move that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? We are adjourned. <clears throat>